Okay, so uh, my name is Aaron. Okay, I, I love UGS. Yeah. And um, what I do is I've shipped various products with UGS, crypto trading platform, travel industry. And uh, yeah, so I organized the UGS meetup and also co-organized the React Jazz meetup. Uh, I like to try out other frameworks also to convince myself that uh, Vue.js is, is nice. Yes, okay, yes, yes, enough. <laughs> yes. And my teaching assistant is uh, Drew Bajit, okay? He's uh, actually my colleague. He loves Vue.js also, uh, but also every day he works on uh, React by day, yes. So he builds uh, web, uh, components for internal apps. He trains, gives night classes in the a, in a company that we work with, Seneca. Okay, we also have uh, some help us from the Vue.js meetup group, uh, Schilling and uh, Eugene over there, yes. So if you have any help, just raise your hands and ask them. Uh, yeah, they will help, okay? So if you're stuck, please, please raise your hands, please. Okay, we want you all to move on. Okay, next slide. Okay, so the workshop goal, we do not have any agenda. Okay, we just want to meet, uh, hopefully these are your expectations, which is to speed up your learning about Nux.js. Okay, if you know some view or React is good, uh, if you don't, uh, you can ask around, okay, because I think uh, most of you all here know view or uh, React. Yes, okay, uh, so hopefully there's some real world ready framework and tasks that we'll perform here. <sighs> okay, uh, yes, so there's some unique content that's not in Google yet, so you can write it later. Yeah, so you can share this after that, it's okay, it's fine. Okay, hopefully there's something you can do next. Okay, uh, pair programming or is welcome. Uh, yep, and then the materials they are available. Yeah, so later I will flash it up again. Okay, so a quick one. What is Nux.js? So it's basically a framework for building Vue.js applications. If you know what uh, this uh, Next.js is for, for React, Nux.js is basically the similar. It's a, app, a framework, yes. So what is this framework? I'll uh, explain further on after that. Okay, thank you, welcome. Uh, yeah. Okay, so why Vue.js? Okay, so a few things that, uh, that uh, we want to just show first. Okay, React, so we have three very popular frameworks. React is uh, built by somebody from Facebook. So it's obviously uh, influenced by this thing called XHP, which is some XHTML component framework for PHP, which I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, you can go and look at the Wikipedia on it. Yeah. So problems with it uh, that uh, we found when working with React, well, I found when working with React and a few others is like, for the higher order components, when you have lots of it, um, it's like back to the object-oriented programming where you need to debug and it's very difficult to find out where things are. Okay, next. Okay, AngularJS, many breaking changes. Okay, next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, oh yeah, one more thing. The RxJS actually is a very fantastic thing, but they use it everywhere. So uh, it's not really a good, because it's, it's a very good tool, but just too good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Vue.js. Okay. What's so good about it? Firstly, it's, uh, it's supposed to be faster and smaller than the other two, and the, it's the most standards compliant of all the three. Like, if you go into web components, you see this thing called slots, and all these things. You, when you go to Vue.js and you see the slots thing, they are very, very closely related. Yep. You can do a lot of other things also, like uh, the, the CSS, the transitions, all these things are all pretty straightforward in Vue.js, yes. Okay, so, but whether you use Vue, Angular, React, or even Ember, Svelte, or Vanilla JS, uh, you need to know about these uh, four things. Uh, single page application, server side rendering, static sites, and progressive web apps. Okay, uh, so anybody who does not know these four things, all know, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, progressive web app is something by Google, um, where you actually the word progressive means you slowly, slowly improve on the website. So 
you like add in um, some sort of uh, uh, where you can load up all the assets. assets yes, all the assets, and that's yeah, that's the what, what is that? The caching strategies. Yeah, yeah, the manifest files to load up all the the assets, the caching strategies, and also the intercepting the fetch, so that you can sort of like build a a, a, a app on the phone that uh, can work in offline mode and yeah and as that's what the in short the progressive web about okay so maybe i'll just explain a bit more further on this tree so single page applications is what uh, you usually build it's a one html file and very big javascripts inside uh, server side okay so this one will take a long time to load if it's a very big file the bigger your application the longer time to load for server-side rendering, basically, the server is the one that pushes out the web page. So the files are actually smaller when you serve, and you serve them. Hey, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so just Wi-Fi password this year, download this repo. Okay, I'm just getting started. Okay, so server-side rendering is... Yeah, it's rendering the pages uh, bit by bit. Anybody use server-side rendering? Okay, good. So... Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. So probably it will be a refresher when I go through, because the uh, server side rendering there's a lot of things to take care of. Whether you're rendering on the server or on the client, and you can get into trouble if you don't understand the thing. We'll explain it later. Okay. Then the last one is static sites. Static sites are like your old old days where you have many HTML files, many JavaScript files. Yes. Okay. Next. Let's move quickly. Okay, so it's an application framework. Next, what Nux is? Okay, so for Nux.js, there's basically um, less boilerplate code to write. Uh, everything is organized for you. Like you don't have to to write the routers out for all your routes. Um, uh, the storage, the sorry, the the Vuex store is also um, they abstracted it out. So you just put in each file for each of the of for each of the Vuex modules. I think this one, let's go to the next one. Okay, yeah. Okay, you can easily create the different type of websites that I explained earlier, SPAs, SSR, and static sites. Okay, so what's the difference between SSR and the static websites, which is using uh, Nux Generate to generate it? So this is quite important. So SSR, you are basically like serving the uh, pages one by one, like PHP, like I explained earlier. Okay, it has access to things like your request header info because it's going through the server. <coughs> yes. Then for Nux generate, basically they pre-generate everything, so you generate all the HTML files. Okay, and then uh, after that, everything is basically you load the the file to the browser and you work from there. So, I think the best thing to do now is to show you the table of what is happening, which is. The best part gets screwed up. <laughs> That's the table next, right? Uh, your computer can see? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's ah, okay. Okay, sorry for the technical difficulties. Very quick. We'll fix it. Yeah, leave it there. Okay. Then just push it. Okay. Next slide. Yes. <coughs> oh, this one, uh, you no, um, yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so this is the comparison for all these three. Okay, so for search engine optimization, SPA is poor because you see very little information on the page. It's all being rendered by the JavaScript. Okay. For server-side rendered, it is good because you render the information and then you push it out. And then the search engine actually can pick up those things. Static website is ex exactly the same. How about the time to first paint? Okay, so for SPAs, because you have to load, the bigger the application again, the slower it is. So, but for SSR and static sites, it's, a bit, it's faster, definitely. Deployment, very easy for single page applications. You just 
You can serve it from the S3 or from Netlify or Google Cloud. Okay, by the way, if anybody needs help to set up or anything, just raise your hands. The assistants are sitting behind there. Okay, with the green color cake <laughs> behind the shirt. Okay, um, deployment for SSR is a bit more involved because you need the server to serve the thing. So if you need to scale up, you need to scale up the servers. But for static sites, it's again similar to the uh, SPAs. So fourth point, uh, same. Fifth point, dynamic routes. Okay, so SPAs and SSRs, uh, basically they'll serve up the dynamic routes. But on a static site, because you generate the pages, so if let's say one of the pages is not found, you will get a not found error. And what happens is that it could be like a website property guru where there's a slash and then there's a property name. And there are thousands of properties in Singapore. You cannot be generating a page for every single one of them. So in this case, it will get a 404 for the static sites unless you generate those things. Uh, but there will be a way to handle this and I'll show you how to do it in this workshop. Yes, then... Uh, Okay, next is the dev complexity. <sighs> okay, SPA and static sites because it's all happening in the browser, so you don't have to worry. All the things that work in the uh, browser, like the window.eventListener, it will all be okay. But for SSR, you really need to be careful because if you render on the server side and you call some thing that is in the browser, like window.eventListener, it's bye-bye. Yeah, you see the, the error page. Yeah, 500 error. It should be a 500 error. Okay, then uh, last one, uh, PWA. Okay, so I, both of, all of them can handle. Yeah. So, any questions on this one? No questions? Okay, so now I'll go to why I'm advocating uh, static sites, but you can still build in P SPA if it's, let's say, an internal app. The app size is not very, 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 very big. <coughs> Hey, there's no server side similar to SPA, but there's less complexity in the development and also the deployment. Okay, actually, I'm repeating what I said just now, so I'll skip about the libraries. Um, oh, wait, can go back. Let me see anything else. Uh. Okay, next. Yeah, this one I said earlier on. Okay, so now what will we build today? Now, Nux.js will cover as much Nux as possible. Uh, we'll dissect one of the modules. Okay, because uh, there was some problem that I faced and the normal module couldn't uh, fix it. So you have to go in and see how to fix it. Um, we'll look about these things like the Nux views, layouts, and the compo uh, the, yeah, the Nux views and their layouts, the options and the lifecycle. Okay, I'll explain this one uh, in detail later. Uh, SSR and static sites issue. So later on, we'll go and see how the website explodes. Okay, then uh, we'll install a simple REST API so that you can do the, uh, some uh, API. And that's where we are fixing the problem for the module. Okay. So, before we start, let's do this. Uh, we install the backend. Okay, so uh, have you cloned the repository? Okay, so if you have not cloned the repository and follow the commands down here, and once you do npm run dev, port 3000, it should work. Uh, okay, so maybe the, my assistants will go around and help. Then I will we'll take about two minutes. Two minutes. <coughs> run init db is to initialize the database. Uh, it's a backend. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, no, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ignore the repo up there. Ignore the repo up there. Yeah, it's, a, it's the, in the backend folder. It's in the backend. Go to the backend folder. Do the npm install. Uh, I took out, uh, yeah, it was derived from the project on top, and I took out quite a lot of the things up there. Yeah. Okay, so. So we don't need that other git clone, git clone, GitHub. Ah, uh, yes, git clone, yes, the okay. whole thing. Yeah. Yes. So we start from the second step. Like yeah. Just... yeah, I think the node mon you don't have to because I've updated the package. Sorry, you just ignore the node mon. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, anybody needs help? Too fast, too slow? No, right? Okay. Too fast, let me know. Okay. okay. Too slow, so let me know. Okay, done. Okay. Uh, anybody haven't finished? Okay, a little bit. Oh. Right. Okay. 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 Yes. You can help your neighbors too if they need help. Okay. I'll just go around one last time. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Ken? Oh, okay. What is the last one? NPM run in a DB after that? Run death. Run death. Okay. You need the power, is it? Uh, you can use those. Yes, yes. Oh dear! Wait! <sighs> Wait, is it a small one? Ah? <laughs> oh yeah, you just need the third one to yeah. plug in, you'll yeah. go in. Yours is a big one. Is it? No, yeah. it's not enough power because his oh. MacBook is bigger. But I think you should put it there also. Because yeah. somebody might... This is not a good thing to... Okay. Yes, that, that the one down there. Any more space? Okay. Un okay. okay. Can already? Ah uh, yes, it's fine. I think um, it's a API slash or slash login. Yes. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. The API roots don't care yet. Okay. It's wrong. It's API slash slash off slash login and ape slash api slash off slash logout but don't care about this it's okay once you see the console listening at port 3000 you are fine okay listening at port 3000 you are fine don't need to yeah anyway if you want to test out the post uh i forgot the parameters ah uh. uh, yes this is correct yeah it will give you back something if you just post rubbish to it. Okay, who's not ready? Okay. Okay, I will start, carry on in about 30 seconds. Okay, anybody not ready? Oh, you're not ready. You're not ready. Wes. There is an issue with the NPM module, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Can I see your module? Minus B. No, that should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can this you okay. Thank you. Yeah. I should Are you using MVM? Do you have no version manager? MVM? No, I don't think so. So MVM? Yeah. I think this is okay. Like. Why? What's the error again? Let me see. So he was uh, a backend. He does a uh, NPMI. Uh -huh. And then he works, he's unable to get the database there. So it's still like database is not being installed when you do NPMI. Okay, okay, that is definitely a problem. Uh, okay, okay, wait, you help him the thing. Okay, Ken. Oh, wait, is she ready? Okay. Yes, yes. As long as you see the thing listening and port 3000 is fine. Okay, don't worry about the rest. Okay, so. Okay, don't worry, I'll move on, but uh, the assistance will help, okay? So not to worry. Okay, so this bottom left is what you should see, this black color thing. Listening on port 3000, that's all. And later what we'll build is this uh, login and logout only. Okay, but uh, yeah, you can add more things after that. Okay, so let's get started with NUX now. Okay. First line, npx create dash nux dash app uh, js conf. That's all. Run the first line. Within the backend folder? 
Uh, no, oh, shh. get out of the backend folder. Uh, sorry, go one level on top and then run the command. Actually, you can run on the backend folder also, but it has not been good. Yeah, but thanks. Just uh, yeah, exit the go one level up of the backend and then run the create Nux, Nux app. Okay, so while it's uh, oh, so it'll ask you a few questions. Okay, the important thing is server framework none because we are not gonna do any uh, deploy any uh, express or anything yet. Uh, select Axios when it comes to the option. Do not select any linter or prettier because later if you cut and paste the code, you might have some problem if my format is uh, not the same. Okay, no linter, no prettier. Just in, uh, add the Axios. And then UI framework is beautify. And then the rest, I think it should be okay. Oh, no 10. No 10. He's on not 12, but then okay. the SQ light, right? Yeah, SQL light, so it's a node jig module. <laughs> okay. I can't remember what's the Okay. For okay. The node 12 people, right? Go to package JSON, delete the SQLite package, and do a npm install SQLite again. <coughs> See what? Maybe it's the version that I'm using. But uh, okay, don't worry. If you do not, if you can't install the backend, right, it's still fine. Okay, okay, uh, okay, who's still not ready? Okay, yes, okay, don't read this one. We have another, some more time. Okay, so once you finish all the option settings, the, you ju then uh, we just wait there, okay? Okay. Ah, okay. okay. Please work. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so for those with Node 12, uh, keep your fingers crossed. Some of the Node 10 versions also have problems with a few of them. With the SQLite, is it? Yeah, seems like it. So, ah, so it delete. Might, it might be a, you may need a specific yes. point something. Yes. Okay. Sorry, those. Yes. Those. Oh, sorry, wait, wait, give me a minute. Those with SQLite tree problems on the back end, delete the SQLite tree from the package JSON file and do a npm install again. Yes. Uh, if you have issues with that, just raise your hand. I'll yes. talk to you specifically for the SQLite. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Yes. Sorry. Got what is it? This will uh, SQL. Ha. Ah, yeah. So, go to package JSON. Uh, delete this one and install it again. Yeah. Let's see what to do after the back ending. So oh, I have the back end. Okay, and then exit back end. Do the the first one. Is it? Yeah, first one. This document somewhere because I can't. <sighs> okay, yes. Let me do something. Okay, I know some of you have not got this got this far. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, here, here. I'll write it here. Sorry, Ada. Okay, this one all in small letters. Okay. Here, here. Can see? Okay, that's the most important part. Okay. Okay, we'll give another two minutes, we'll move on. Okay. Don't worry, we are still uh, on time. Yes. Sorry? Ah, okay. Front end directory is the answer. Yes. It's, uh, everything is there. So, 
we are now doing the front end from scratch. Yes. Yes. And okay. So while the rest of you are waiting, those who are ready, right? There's this package. Ah, oh, I'll wipe out this. There's this package you can use. One command, you run the front and the back end together. Because right now you need to go to the back end folder, npm run dev, front end folder, npm run dev. So this package concurrently. Okay, if you don't know, just go and look for it. Uh, once you install it, you can use it to run your front and your back end together and save you a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, what's the commands for the DB setup again? Uh, init-db. Init init-db. Yeah, okay. it's inside the... And npm start, right? npm oh, run dev. Just read the readme, right? Yeah, uh, package JSON. <laughs> everything is the package JSON. Oh, everything is in the package JSON. Yeah, actually the readme is too... I forgot already. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Uh. Okay, one minute. Okay, so... Uh, I'll move on, okay? Okay, I'm moving on. Okay. Uh, so what you see inside is the project structure for NUX. Okay, um, I think you can't see. Uh, okay, so that might... Can you all do a npm run dev inside the front end directory? Oh, sorry, inside JSConf. Inside JSConf. You will have some problem. Okay? You will have some problem. Okay, you, yes, because you are using port 3000. Nux is using port 3000. So, first lesson for Nux we are going to do is configure the port. Okay? So, inside JSConf, there's a folder nux.config.js. Open it. Okay, and I will write the property that you will key in to change the port number. Okay, so server. Okay, this is the property server. And then actually, you don't need the host, just port. You can use 8080 or anything that you have free on your computer. Okay, so. Change to this, and then do the npm run dev again. Okay, so whether it's jsconf or backend, the command to run the application is the same, npm run dev. Okay. 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 Yeah, so it will hot module reload. If you change, okay, let me go back. Okay, so for those who are free, I will explain the project folder for next. Okay, you just need to go to the file explorer view, okay, to the JSConf folder. There are a few folders inside there. The first one you see is assets. So you place all the assets like PNGs, even some JavaScript files inside there, your utility files. What happens inside the assets folder is that the webpack will compress and whatever they do with it. Okay? It's the first thing. Your CSS also put inside there. The next part is the components. That's where you put uh, the components that you build for the application. Okay? Then next is the layouts. Okay, this is the layout where you, like for some websites, your login page, you have a certain layout. You don't have a nav bar, you don't have a menu. After you log in, all the pages have a nav bar, a menu, and so on. So you can specify different layouts for your various pages. Okay, we will touch on this. Uh, just a quick check, sorry. Who has yet to get their API server on port 3000 working? 
Okay. Okay, or all have it running, or get some random JSON result at port 3000. Okay. <coughs> okay. So for the NUX installation and running, uh, if you need help, they are still around here. I will go on with the, the others. Okay, so um, okay, I'll skip middleware first. Pages is where all your pages uh, for your web application live. So you can have your login, logout page inside there, products page. And then you can even have uh, subfolders for each page, like uh, products, and then uh, sub products, and so on. So it's uh, basically a tree view. So how many levels your URL parameters you want to go is mirrored by this page. You don't need to set up any routing or anything. This one will actually do it for you. And how to sp uh, specify a dynamic route will go through inside. Okay, so since pages is very important, and there's a lot of things going inside the pages where the NUX options are. Uh, yes, which will explain. Okay, uh, plugins is uh, basically like your Axios when you install or like Moment or something, and you want to do something before that. Uh, you put it inside there. Same for the middleware. Uh, static is all your static content, which will not be web packed. And the store is the Vuex store, which is like Redux and so on. Okay, so this is the NUX structure. Every NUX application follows uh, this structure. Yeah. So now we come to two things. There are two things in NUX, plugins and modules. There's actually a big difference between them. Say plugins can be something like external libraries like your moments, your lojet, lodash, uh, and beautify, which is a UI, is also a plugin. Okay, so what happens is that uh, there's some initialization code where you want to set the theme of the plugin, like for the theme of the beautify, you create a beautify file in the plugins directory, and in nux config. There's also something that, uh, that uh, tells you uh, there's a property called plugins and it has the beautify inside uh, to tell you where to search for the file inside the plugins folder. I think it's better you look inside the, the plugins folder to see if there's anything. There may not be anything actually right now. Okay, wait, never mind. Okay, so anyway, plugins is, is very simple. It's just some external libraries that you add into the view uh, Nux.js. Okay, the other thing is modules. Okay, modules are more involved because they are extending the core functionality of Nux.js. So there's a lot of uh, things that uh, some code or some uh, operation inside these modules that's tightly linked to Nux.js. So this actually is a very big topic which uh, I can't cover because I'm also not capable to Cover because I've not built a module from scratch yet, but we'll go and dissect the module. Okay, so we have already installed one of the modules, which is Axios. Okay, it's already done. Let me look at the code. Okay. Hey, true. Oh, later, can you help me look at your thing to open up so that I can see the code? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I. Okay. Can I have, have, have a look? Sure, thanks. Okay, uh, okay there's nothing in the plug it's in page. It just read me in. Yeah, okay, so never mind. Uh, there's nux. the modules in. Yes, okay. Okay, so it's how you know that it's already installed inside uh, Nux.js is that you look at the Nux config file. Okay, there's actually a module called Axios and also for Beautify inside. Oh, Beautify is module now. Okay. Okay, so. Today we'll learn about the authentication module and we'll go into it. Okay, we have not installed that one yet. Okay, so the important thing is the Nux config file where all the configuration takes place. Okay. Okay, this one we've gone through. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, but now the screen has disappeared. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, wait, I know what to do. Uh, hi. Okay, it's coming back on again. So I just minimize this one. Right? Okay, sorry. Okay. 
Oh, uh, thank you. Ah, this, this is slide number one. Okay. Mm. Okay, so now we'll go to the first module that we're going to install. If you need a reference, oh gosh, it's so small. Okay. Okay, let's go to, you just open up this page later because we're gonna dig into the code inside here. AUTH NUXT. Ah, thank you. <sighs> okay, so auth.nux.jx.org. Uh, we'll be digging into this later. So we're gonna install this module now. Uh, so we just do a npm install at nuxjs slash off. <coughs> Or you can do npm i, just a small i, it's faster. Okay. Yeah. Uh, npm i. Okay. We already installed Axios, so there's no need to do it. Okay, then once you finish installing the end, uh, module, you go to nux.config.js and add, add the add nux.js slash off to the module's property. Okay, so there's a module's property inside nux.config.js. You just add the, the package name at nux.js. In which, which order right now, it doesn't matter, yeah. I think it gives an error about store. Do we need to create this file? Oh, okay. Yes, if you got an error about the store being missing, just create an index.js file inside the store folder. That's all. It can be a blank file. Yeah. I don't know why it, it happened before I saw. You just create the file, index.js, and everything will work fine. Okay, so if you get an error about the store index.js not found, just create the file and leave it. It should work after that, right? Yes, okay. Yeah. Right. Good catch. <laughs> We have only installed it. We are going to start to use it soon. Uh, okay, let me. Uh, I've not used the Mac for some time. It's the same as Windows. <laughs> yes. Like my equation is still the same. <laughs> so I think it should be okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So now that you have put the thing inside the. <laughs> Ah, inside the nux.config.js. Uh, okay, we'll now configure the we'll now configure the module. So let me go to the website now. Okay. Okay, I think if you can't see, don't worry. <gasps> Help me to set up the Okay, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, what is it? Ah, uh? okay. Suddenly, oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, do you see a readme dash one dot md file inside JSConf? Readme dash one.md file. Okay. You scroll to there's a item one, two, three. Okay, item three is the one where the settings for the nux config 
of the off module is there's this off property you can copy and paste it into the nuts off ah wow okay lucky we didn't it's quite small maybe you can open the editor pardon you have the code code editor somewhere visual studio code i don't know what we started yes i don't know what this is oh no is this too small because my can, point I can, I can make it larger oh, and focus okay uh, it's fine yes. which one is this yes i don't know which uh, folder oh have. okay jsconf uh no yeah well, there's too many crap inside here <laughs> Okay, this one. Okay. This is it. I'm scared of the time, lah. Yes, this is it. Okay. No, you can rush. You can speak parts. Okay, this one. Okay. 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 Yes. Wow. Okay. It's no, but it's still you zoom in some more, because behind really I can't see. <sighs> Okay, some more, some more. Yes, uh, scroll down. Yes, there, off. Okay. So, yep. So, we're going to do the local strategy, which is basically you send in your email and password and get a token from the back end. Okay, the back end, how it works, okay, you can figure out yourself later. Okay. So, basically, there are two endpoints. One is login, which is slash off slash. Uh, slash API slash off slash login. The other one is logout. Um, and then the last one, which is user slash API slash off slash me, is to get the user information. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is basically how you configure it. The token required through token type bearer. This is all inside the documentation for Nuxt off. Okay. So still pretty straightforward. Zoom in, nothing. Ah, yes. So we have this really one folder inside our boundary directory. So once it was sent, it has the entire block of code. Yes, all the copy and paste that you need to get things working. Yes. From there to there. Okay. So because we realized that if it's a type along, right, we are dead. You really, you can't see anything. I can't see anything. Okay. Is everyone on the same page? Okay. Everyone good? Yes, just the off block. And then put it in the config. Okay. To show you guys. Case. Uh, yeah, so sorry about going through this, uh, but it's going to get a bit tougher. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. Yeah. Yes. This is the presentation mode? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think need to zoom in. Okay, so this is just for knowledge. We'll see it inside the code later. Okay, you can set up the authentication per rub. So inside view JS files, there's a script uh, and inside the script, there's an export default and here we see a middleware off so once you put the off thing inside this is a protected route that means um, if you're not authenticated by the off module you get uh, redirected to where uh, you uh, where you configure it in nux.js.conf okay, for now, we're using the default which I think will redirect back to the the slash dots the slash yes oh back one more back okay so that's per page you can also do it globally that means you make every route must be authenticated and that is done in the nux config inside the router property okay you set the middleware as off so every route will be authenticated if you want a particular route not to be authenticated you go to the page and then you give a off false Yep, so this uh, straight from the documentation. Uh, yep. Ah, and the middleware, okay. 
you can actually put in a bracket if you have more than one middleware. There could be an internationalization middleware or some other things. So if more than one, you put the, the thing in an array. Otherwise, you can put it in the, just in a string. OK. Yes. Um, guys, I think a lot of you are confused on what file we're coding in. So the front end folder that we have is the actual solution. It, will, it has the entire application up and running. And once we started, we created a new project with the npx uh, create dust app and whatever folder you created, we're coding on that. So just to clarify that, okay? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So now we'll go to the first. Um, uh, we'll go to the sort of like coding. It's actually a copy, copy and paste. Okay. So we'll go to the default view page, we're going to replace everything that's inside there. Okay, so if you go to number four of the readme-1.md, okay, you copy and paste the whole thing over. Replace the whole default dot view inside the layouts folder. So there's a layouts folder, inside there's a default dot view file. Wipe it out and replace it with this. Okay. Uh, what is inside the file is a beautify um, text, HTML text. Yeah, beautify all the beautify for the front end, making it look nice. Okay, that one I think can uh, read more about it later. I will go through the authentication part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So the important thing is cut and paste, make sure it can run, then we'll make, uh, let you understand in a while. Okay, then the, 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 my, uh, the, my teaching assistants or helpers can help, to, help you to understand. Okay. So we copy like from line 44 all the way to uh, yeah. on line 84. Uh, is to line 105. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of code here because we are building a menu, interactive uh, the nav bar and everything. Okay, so if we were to code along, right, I think it will take the three hours to code. So we are here to learn Nux. So you just copy and paste, don't worry. You can understand it later. So now I explain to you the important things inside here. <sighs> okay. You want the one? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, the slides. <laughs> okay. So the first one, dollar dot off dollar dot dollar state dot logged in. Okay, dollar dot off is actually the module, the off module that you're using. So there will be dollar dot off dot whatever, lots of things that relates to the the off module. And this logged in is actually the flag to indicate whether the person is logged in or not. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't contain the user details. It's just whether the person is logged in or not. And okay, the state, right? This module actually comes with a built-in uh, storage. So it will store your, your information. You can store it inside the Vuex store, the local state. The second one is in the session cookie. And the third one is in the local storage. So it actually does everything for you uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so later on, I think when you do the login, if you successfully log in, you check your uh, debugging console, you should be able to see the, the, the information inside. Yes. Okay, next is dollar $off.user. So this one is, contains the information that we get from that API route where we get the user information, the slash API slash off slash me. Okay, and very important, inside the layout page, there's this thing called uh, the Nux tag. So whatever is inside the layout is the parent. And this thing is all the pages that you define inside the page folder, whatever will appear here. And which layout to use is inside the page. 
So inside your web page, the, the file, there's actually this thing called layout or layouts, one of the property. So you specify the layout you are using. For this, it's default. And in Nux, the layout for the default is called default. Okay? <laughs> yeah, so it will go to the default page. Later, we'll build another layout. Okay, so any questions? Any questions? Can run? Can run? Cannot run? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, good. We have still some time. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Imagine you have a login page with no nav bars and you have login page with no nav bars. That's the layout. After you log in, you have a nav bar. Okay, so that's another layout. So you create two layouts. One with one without the nav bar, one with the nav bar. Okay, then you create your pages, which is rest inside the layout. Okay. So let's say you have a sign in and sign out. Sign in and sign out page. You want to use the empty layout. So you inside the sign in and sign out page, there's a layout property. You just specify the name of the layout file that you created. And if it's the other pages, those that after you log in, your products, your users, all this, and you want to use the nav page, okay, you can specify the nav page inside the, uh, inside the, you can specify the nav layout inside the page. The keyword is layout, layout. So inside the page dot view, you have this thing called layout. Ah, I know because you haven't gone to the page yet. Okay, we'll go to the page and then uh, maybe it's easier for, for us to see it all. Okay. Like one very easy way to look at it is like your Nux is just a placeholder where your entire app is going to be rendered. Yeah. So depending on what you have before the Nux and after the Nux, you can define your layouts like that. Yeah. So for example, we have like our layout like this, where the first page is that's just the user and the password. And once you log in, we have a different layout where we will always have the nav bar for all the following pages. We can just reuse this same block of code and just <coughs> re-enter this part using the Nux. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah. So there's some. Huh? Oh, thank you. Okay. So there's some magic going on in the Nux. Okay. So don't worry. Slowly, we will uh, get to learn about it. Okay, let's go on to the next page, the public page, which everybody can see before logging in. So next, we go to item 5 on the readme-1.md, item 5. This is quite short. Okay, you can cut and paste the thing into this page where you create. Okay, so the pages folder, pages folder, you there's this file called index.js. If it's not, oh sorry, index.view. If it's not there, create it. If it's there, replace the whole thing. Yes. It should be there, right? I think it's there. Just replace the whole thing inside there. <coughs> ah! Oh, typo. Okay, yes. It's a. Uh, Step six? Uh, no, sorry, it's step five. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. I've index. done that. Oh, it's okay. Step six is, that'll be a typo. Yes. So really create yes, it's like a typo. Yes. <sighs> okay, let's go to the slide. So everything working, copy and paste, everything working, then I'll explain what's inside the page. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry I can't explain further more, but maybe once I finish, with whatever I need to teach, I can explain more on those things. Okay. So, okay, you have already done npm run dev. Uh, okay, then inside there, there's a dollar off dot, oh, it should be dollar state, okay, and then log in. So this one, it just, the same as before, it tells you whether it's logged in or not. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is just a public page, it's very simple. Uh, sorry, the 
index. Okay, we will create a public page again. Okay. This is where I will do some, some things inside. Okay, so copy number six. And the file name is create a file called public.view inside pages. Okay. Yes. Create a public.view file, copy and paste. Yes, I know it's a lot of copy and paste now, but uh, it is building up for the next step. Oh, oh, 210, okay. <sighs> Okay, this is the page later where we'll test some problems with uh, server-side rendering. Ah, yes, okay, sorry, page down to the default. Ah, yes, up, 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 sorry, up, 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 up. Okay, zoom in, uh, down, down, sorry, down. Ah, yeah, here, okay. So, see down here, middleware uh, off. Okay, so this page is actually it's supposed to be authenticated, okay, but because these options I put uh, off as false, uh, the public can actually, so it's actually not uh, authenticated. So if you are not authenticated, you can still go in. Uh, what else? Uh, there's something very important. Oh yeah, so these layouts, right? You do not see any layouts property inside here. If they do not see it, they are using the default dot view layouts, okay? Yep, so when, when you see this page, you will still see the I think the default page has got the, the, the menu bars and everything. Okay, yeah? okay so I think, okay, so once you're done with the public page, uh, okay, we'll go back to the slide. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. <sighs> yes. <sighs> okay, we'll go on to the private page, which is uh, only after you log in, you can go in. So this one is number seven. Yes. Okay. So we are. Can we name it? Login. Sorry. Uh, it's secure. Yeah, you can call it secure. Okay. If you name it some other name, right? Uh, inside the inside the layouts dot page, you have to also change the route to be similar to this. So if you name it slash abc. You go to the layout dot, uh, default dot view file, look for slash secure and change it to slash abc. Yes. There's number seven which says a page is login dot view and number eight. Oh eight, shoot. Okay, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, sorry, sorry, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, secure, is it? Uh, wait, wait. Uh, okay, sorry, go to eight first. No, because, uh, go to eight, I'm sorry, go to eight. Yes, go to eight and then create this uh, pages log in dot view. Yes, yeah, sorry. Number eight. No, because I changed halfway because the login was more involved. Yes, there's a lot of things inside there. Uh, you can do both. Yes. Okay, do both. Do both. Uh, what's the other one? Secure, right? Secure, is it? Okay, let's just do both. Okay, create the login.view, create secure.view. Uh, copy and paste the code inside. Good suggestion, thank you. Yes, so anytime you find you need some way to improve or speed up, I'm not, I mean improve the pro work processes, please go ahead. Yes. Important thing is the code can work. Okay, once you're done, uh, we'll need to do some things here. Um, okay, wait first. Okay, so there's this thing. Okay, fetch user. Okay, this is the one that uh, fetches user information. Okay, uh, let me look at the... Okay, so once you're ready, go to nux.config.js. And look at 
base URL. Okay, you should be pointing to the local host port 3000. On ah, sorry, base U, Axios base URL. That's Axios and then base URL. I think you drink more water. Okay, so just make sure that uh, this is a uh, local host 3000. So uh, this is the server that we started off before. So we're just connecting to this server that we Yeah, the back end. <laughs> okay, we can move on to the next slide. It's a break. Okay, oh, great. We have a break. Okay, so there's a, this thing called custom elements. It's a, it's a web standard for those web components, one of the four pillars of web components. So there's this website called customelementseverywhere.com and it tells you uh, which is the, whether they are, uh, comp uh, how compatible it is. Okay, uh, Vue and Angular is still there. You can look at all the other frameworks down there, okay? ReactJS is really the worst. Seventy yeah. percent. Seventy-one. <sighs> oh. Okay. Just to get our mind off a bit. Okay. Let's uh, detox the mind a bit. Unwind. Any questions? We can take questions here. No questions, nobody, nothing. Like something in front of you, like we are building on top of Vue.js. So those of you who don't have a Vue.js experience, it may be a bit more difficult yeah. to keep up. Uh, just call us if you need questions, yeah. or have questions, not questions. If you have questions <laughs> that you want to get answered. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the important thing is that uh, whatever you copy and paste, it'll work and then figure it out Later. <laughs> Just try to get the concepts inside. Yeah. And then like you have access to the repository, the code, the slides, then you can dig through the syntax on your own. <sighs> yes. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you have yes. Yes. You have the exact same thing. Okay, thank you. See you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we are like only one third through. Sorry? We are only one third. The timing is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We started 15 minutes. So it's like 76 slides left, and it's like 13. Oh, okay. So it's more like we can just copy paste, we go through whatever we can. Okay. I think it's better to. Okay. Okay. But I didn't explain much on the view leh, because it's all next year. It's all next. So okay. One of the things I realized that we're just building on top of futures, like computed and like the templating, how the script works. Yeah. Actually, you can. You want to talk about that? Like how the view files are actually composed. You want to talk about it? Because I'm not ready for that. No, it's only like templates, and script. Ah, okay. Okay. I can, okay. I can, I can say something. I'm okay. Okay. You can go ahead. You need me to. I will scroll in. Just open any view file and default for view. Okay. Wait, ah? Just want you to show the structure of like how a view app is actually composed. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Anything, anything. Relax. <laughs> any file is fine. Ah. Oh my yes. gosh. Okay. Oh. Just like a quick primer of Vue.js, like every one view file we have is uh, split into three segments. The first part is the template, which is just our HTML. So this is the same as our JSX syntax in React. And this is also the same as like our templates in Angular. 
So we we'll just like everything you see here, like these are just the components of our view, and these are just our HTML files, uh, HTML tags. So after the template tag, we have the script tag. So inside the script, whatever we have is just a JavaScript. So this is just JavaScript, like nothing fancy. And whatever we're exporting from here is going to be passing to the view uh, application, like the view part that we're running behind the scenes. And the view exposes like some properties that it expects, like data, async data, and some things. We're not going through that now, but it's like a very quick primer. So whatever is inside the script is just our JavaScript. Whatever is inside our template is just our HTML template. And whatever is inside our style tags is our CSS. We have styles here? No, but there's CSS later. We can also have our style here, and that can be scoped as well. So I realize that a lot of you may be using Vue for the first time. So this is just like a very quick primer for that. Oh, OK. <sighs> so it's like we only have one file where it's segmented into three different parts. Uh, the templates, the scripts, and then the CSS. Rather than it's like that. I think it's starting. OK. So now we're going to go to the fun part. OK, so if you look at the documentation for the authentication for Nuxt, it's uh, very easy, actually, because all you need to do is call this login with thing, and then you specify the strategy, like local. There's two, local and OAuth2. So if you use OAuth2, you can do a GitHub, Google, whatever. Okay, so we can do this very easily, username, password. Next slide. <laughs> now, okay, but now we hit a roadblock. Okay, okay yes. So what is my problem? Any? Guesses? It's very easy. I just log in and log out. But why can't I use it? Sorry? Don't worry. There's no wrong answer. It's okay. <laughs> that is part of the problem. That's part of the problem. Uh, Isn't it a registration page? Oh, okay. Very good. Actually, that is very close. Okay, very close. Very close. Getting closer. Okay. Ah uh, no, it's not that one because uh, that one is always public is always false. It's okay. Yes. Okay. I'll I'll show. <sighs> okay. Two FA. I got an app that needs two FA. Google off. You know, this. I can't do it. I check the the Stack Overflow, Stack Everywhere. Nothing. Okay. So time to dig into the modules. Okay. So now. We will go into the off module. Okay, now I'll teach you how to dig inside. You go, uh, let's go to GitHub, or you can search for Nux off. Okay, once you're there, go into the package JSON file, because from there you can see where the module will start off. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, <laughs> very. Okay, plus, 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 plus. Yes. Okay, I think you have to bigger the thing. Plus, 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 plus. Yes, okay. Package JSON, there's this thing called main property inside there. Inside, you should see a lib slash module slash index.js. So, this is the starting point of everything where you dig. It's not just for off module, some other package that you use even in React or whatever is, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so let's go inside the package JSON. Okay, lib. Okay, so we're going to the lib module index.js. Okay, I think I can zoom in a bit more. Okay, let's look at the packages first on top. Uh, sorry, the const. Uh, Okay, nothing here that tells me anything. Go down a bit more. Okay, okay. this lib root tells you where the library root is, which is actually on top. Uh, okay, now I go scroll down some more. Uh, nothing looks interesting yet. Okay, setting default strategies. We know from the documentation, there's a few. Okay, there's this copy plug in. Okay. 
Ah, wait. Okay, so copy plug in is inside the one of the inside the import where they all set up everything. Okay, never mind. We scroll down and we see validate options. Okay. Uh, this is just yeah, but it's just copying the yeah all the options inside. Okay, so ah, uh, okay, not copy core yet. You can scroll down some more. Okay, copy plugin. Okay, scroll down. Okay, okay, scroll down. Nothing interesting. <gasps> okay, scroll down. Don't worry, if I forgot, I have the answer somewhere. Ah, resolve scheme. Wow. Okay, okay, wrong. Okay, scroll up. I think it's somewhere in copy plugin. Ah, uh, where is it? Okay, wait, sorry, scroll down a bit, scroll down. Okay, so there's something set here. Okay, options. Uh, go to the slide. La. I, can't, I, forget. I remember digging through this. Okay, let's see. Index, liberal, copy plugin. Ah, okay, copy plugin. Yes, this is like copy plugin. Okay, on top. Okay. So this source resolve libroot, it goes to this plugin.js. So there's a plugin system inside view. I suspect something is going on inside. So we'll proceed to the next file, which is plugin. Which is plugin but need to know the folder. Which yeah. is on the root module. Yeah. OK, wait. Let's go to the slide first. OK. Yeah, so we go to the module plugin. So now in module index, go up and go to the module plugin. Yes. This is the one. Yes. Okay. So uh, this looks like something interesting. CTX inject and the dollar sign off. Do you see that also? So this uh, doing something important, and there's a new off where it creates a new instance of this off. So this is quite important. There must be something inside here. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, so it initialized. Okay, there's something inside here. What is in the notes inside? Ah, so this is in. Okay. Something and yes. Returning something. So the off is obviously ah sorry the import off. Go to the import off. Go to the import off. Okay, so this top line is uh, telling me that it's importing something here, which is very important. So I'm going to find the off JS file. So go back to module and then go to lib. Lib, because it's not here. There's somewhere where they, they actually link it to the off file. Uh, look at the core. I think it's in the core. OK, so go into the off JS now. OK, so exactly we see there's uh, the context and options that's passed in when we knew the off object. OK, let's scroll down some more. Okay, strategy is here. Scroll down some more. Okay, uh, some more. Okay, stra strategy and same scheme are the same things. Yes, let's scroll. Up. I think because this is the of oh, login with, login with is inside the documentation. So this login with calls something inside here called login. So we go into the login, which is just below. Okay, and it's looking for this dot strategy dot login. So it's got to do with something in the strategy. Okay, because down here you can see also wrap login, this dot strategy log login. Okay, so we go to find another file. Let's go back up again. So yes, there's a strategy somewhere or something. Uh, go up. Oh, so no, no, get out of the folder. Yes. Okay, get out of core. I don't think it's here. Uh, nope. Ah, oh, wait, wait. Just let me show you something. Okay, storage.js. Go inside here. This is where you see that uh, they are actually working with the Vuex store. The ah, okay. So they actually work with the. You can they store the authentication stuff inside the local state, inside cookies, and inside strategy. So everything all inside there. You don't have to build your own. Uh, you don't have to add any more code. Okay, let's find the off. I uh, know the strategy. Okay, st strategy is also schemes. Okay, uh, yeah, it sounds like it. So guess, best guess. 
Ah, so there's two schemes, local and OAuth 2, as in the documentation. Let's look at local, see what happens. Local. Okay, scroll down. Uh, okay, set token. This one, oh, it works with Axios. So this is where it actually sets the authentication header. Okay, okay, good. This one, we may need it later. Um, scroll down some more, we look, look for the login. Ah, login. Okay, so if you didn't specify your endpoints inside the config file, they'll return, bye-bye. Okay, so you need to specify. Um, let's look at some more. Okay, so login, slash, fetch token, oh. Okay, so what happens is that login also does a fetch user. The problem with the, the OTP is that when I do the login first, I haven't cleared the OTP, so I can't fetch the user. So that's a problem. So what I need to do is uh, I need to do a login without fetching the user. Once I clear the OTP, then I fetch the user. Okay, so uh, how do we do it? Sorry? Basically, we have to do something here. What? It's that we have to do something. Uh, yes, we have to do something with the functions here, which is the which is the login and so on. We can actually make use of all these functions down here, okay, which I will show later. Yes, let's go back to the slide. Then we can start working on the solution. Okay, uh, there are some tips though. Uh, you can console log inside the source files to see what's happening, okay, to learn more about the library. That's one thing when you want to dig in. And you use find in files a lot to find things. Okay, so basically what is important is that set token that we need to call if we are going to do all the things by ourselves to set the authentication header. There's also a set token that is inside the auth.js we need to call. Okay, this one later if you want you can dig in yourself. This for set setting all the local storage and so on. Um, okay, so here's the, I explained before, for fetch user, this should fail for the 2FA and only after you clear the 2FA, then you fetch the user. Okay, so we are gonna fix it instead of waiting for somebody to fix this problem. Okay, so how are we gonna fix? Ah, okay, next slide. Oh no, previous. Okay, so we're gonna fix it ourselves. We'll use the existing library source. We are not gonna do any forking or whatever. We'll just use the functions that's existing inside there which is inside the login.view, which you have already copied and pasted, right? Okay, so, oh, I need your pa password. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so um, maybe we can go into the login.view file now to see how uh, it is actually done, okay? Just now you have copied and pasted the login.view, right? So. This actually the answer is actually inside there. <sighs> okay, uh, one thing to note is this one, I did not put in any uh, OTP, uh, but you can still log in and log out uh, without the OTP part. If you want to see the whole OTP thing in action, uh, there's actually a, uh, my repository actually has it. Yep. Another repository. Okay, so login.view. Okay, so uh, scroll down a bit. Uh, yeah, login.view. Okay, so uh, what happens is that uh, once the person clicks the login button. Uh, oh, you want a little login button there? Okay, but you need to zoom in. Yeah, they can't see. Okay, so once you click the login button, okay, it will go to a method inside Vue.js. There's this thing called method, okay, which will do the login. Okay, so what happens is that I okay, I actually didn't use those endpoints that are specified in the in the NAF, NAF off because uh, I'm doing it here. So it will send a post to the back end, okay, using an email and password, and then it will come out. Okay, for uh, the Example, the username and the password is test, T-E-S-T. -E okay. Uh, okay, maybe you can try it later. So <coughs> the thing is, after the thing comes back successively, I set the token 
in the local storage and so on. And I set the token in the Axios. Okay, and then after that, I get the me result. Of course, if you are doing the OTP, you will not be getting your me user. You'll be going again to get your OTP verified before you get the user. Okay, and once you get the user back, uh, you can use the off function, set the off module set user to set the user. So this is where you get just now the dollar dot off dot dollar state dot user, the user information. And once you're authenticated, we can push you to uh, uh, whichever page that you want to, okay, which is secure page. So if you want now, you can actually test out by typing the username and password test test to go into the secure page and there'll be some information that is displayed in the secure page. <coughs> oh, actually, this is quite fast. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's done already. Okay, everybody good so far? It's okay. Okay, you. Okay. Okay, so we have a, while you are checking it out, uh, we have a short, uh, short break again. Okay. Oh, typo. Uh, change to, I uh, can't change, set interval. Okay, so um, set interval, this uh, JavaScript command. Okay, how you use it in React hooks. Okay, when you are in use effect and you need to set interval, there's this whole block of code that you need to do in order to set the interval. Okay, in Vue.js, it's just this one line down here on the mounted hook. Okay, mounted means the JavaScript is ready. The page is loaded, the JavaScript is ready. Yes, this, uh, the, for the, the React is comp yeah, component did mount. Okay, so uh, that's uh, why I actually prefer Vue.js to React. Uh, okay, and then there's a very long explanation on why this is so, yeah, yeah, so we'll take another short break. Okay, okay. Are we almost in page? <coughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, anybody still need uh, help? Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. Oh. For some reason, my backend is like not being nice to me. Sorry. Okay. A uh, console. Yeah. Four o four not found. Oh. Okay. Check your base URL. Uh, Nuxconf. Okay. Yeah, not config. Yes, correct. Base. This looks okay. Okay. Uh, okay, take a look at the login page again. Sorry. It's okay. Okay. Mm, it looks okay. Ah, okay, wait. Um, your backend again is running, right? Started it. I, think. I just okay. started it. Okay, so basically in the beginning, like when I was like initializing the the Nux uh, view, or whatever, uh, I even selected Axios. It didn't come with the whole thing configured. Oh. So I had to like install it myself. Oh, and okay. All that stuff. So I was wondering maybe it had something to do with that. Uh, okay, so see this. Config, I tried to like just copy whatever was done. This looks okay. Is this fine? Yes. Uh, what about this? Um, this is common. This is not. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe so that's I need the, help. That's the only thing that I can think of. Oh, wait. Shilling. Uh, sorry, he needs help with the login. Oh, sorry, test, test. Try yeah, test. Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah. It's a yeah. can login. I can't post. Post. Yeah, I can't post the login. Oh, you're posting to the wrong 
is eight thousand. Oh, yeah. Okay, somewhere it is. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so you need to find. Some... To this piece, yeah. I think, no. Yes. Or oh, the server thing. No, this not this thing? one. This port, correct. Port eighty eighty. Yes, the server port is correct. But your base URL is not really not correct. Working, uh. Yes, it's not working correctly. Okay. Ah, restart your 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 Nux app. Okay. Off and on, not the back end, the front end restart. Okay, anybody else got issue? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah. um, guys, I think a lot of you are facing login issues with Axios. Uh, you cannot find folks or artifact or something, so. Yes. It's also there, right? Because we installed Axios. Okay, the other thing is stop the NUX and restart again. Yes. So. Does it? Still doesn't. Stop our server. Oh. We go into our nux.config.js and inside this folder we have this modules property which is an array you should already have some things here on top of that and have to add Is yours working? Oh, you can log in, okay Okay, okay, I'll ask around can you log in? Okay, you can yeah, log in. Okay. Are you able to log in? No. Oh, can I? Okay, you know, try test. Okay, you can log in. Are you able? Oh, you can. You can't log in, right? Oh, yeah, you need Axios. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Oh, sorry. I don't have. Uh, okay, you got. Uh, okay. Okay. You can log in, right? Okay. Okay. I need to go over the workshop. Okay. You can start the yes. <sighs> okay. Uh can start again? Okay, we'll we'll continue first and try and compete. If any of you have problems later after the workshop, we will help to get it working for you. Okay, so now we come to uh, routing in uh, Nux.js. Okay, so basically we are gonna see how the routing goes on Nux.js. Ah, okay, this is gonna be a quite a long one. Okay, so you copy, okay, there's a readme file to look at, readme-2.md. Okay, so I think we'll speed things up by copying all and creating all the pages. Okay, so we create a folder under pages called dynamic. Okay, pages slash dynamic. Okay, and then you create some files inside underscore slug dot view okay and this file you can copy and paste item number two okay then there's another one under item number four index dot view but uh, oh wait okay then I just copy slug dot view underscore slug dot view first okay so I'll show you the dynamic navigation okay this one you don't uh, you don't need to log in to to get it to work okay so don't worry yep so once you get into underscore slug dot view dot navigation uh, sorry once you uh, Copy in the page. Okay, you, um, the front end is it running? Yeah. Okay, just click on this one. Okay, go to the nav uh, bar on the left. Click on the oh, dynamic roads. What do you see? Okay, uh, click on dynamic routes. Oh, that's all you see. Wait. <laughs> Oh, did I see? I missed this 
Yes, I think you, number two, you copied the whole thing, right? Yep. Okay, see the page. Yes, click on this one, slug dot view. Yeah. Okay, see what's on top. Uh, okay, you should be able to see the rest. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, are you able to see some links in the page when you click on the dynamic? You can't see. Okay, wait, never mind. Get back to you. <laughs> ah, okay, you can see, right? Okay, so inside the dynamic page, one, two, three, all this. So when you click on the one, two, three, you will see the header on top change as you click on the page. There's something wrong with your site. Yeah, so you rebuild. Okay, those who have something wrong, stop the NUX, Control C, and run the thing again. We are going on dynamic routes. So they should see a, a go to the dynamic uh, menu item on the left. And then there's some, uh, you open up a page where you can navigate between the pages. Okay, let me go and just go around. Okay, are you okay? Yeah, I'm a creative player. Oh, okay, okay. So when you go to this, ah, shit, routes, okay, yours is this, problem. But <laughs> then when you go here, it will be able to show you. Yes, yes. But like when you click this, Thing it will yes, I will tell you why. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so when you navigate, right, just go to slash dynamic slash one. Okay, because the the slash dynamic page is not there. That's why you get a 404 error. Uh, okay, so go slash dynamic slash one. Okay, then you can see some items ready. Okay, so yeah, yeah, slug. So when you don't have the the index page, you get a four or four error. Okay, okay, okay. Then you go to Sorry. So it does work with uh, slash one. Yes. But clicking here just. Uh, yes, it's four o four because this is a a. Okay, when you click on the 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 okay, when you click on the menu. It goes to slash A. Why is getting a 404? You go into the, the slug page again. There's this function called validate. This is one of the NUX options. So it will validate your parameters. So sometimes your parameters, you only want integers. You don't want characters. Then, yeah, so it will 404 you if you type in something. Yes. Okay. So you see there's a there's a validate function inside the slug.view page. There's the one that validates the, the, the parameters. Uh, uh, so if your, if your index is an uh, alphabet and not a number, then you're 404. Yeah, actually, I fixed that thing, but I didn't. Somehow it wasn't inside here. Okay, so, so much for it. Okay, no next thing you can create after the underscore slug, right? You can create an index.view and then copy and paste everything inside there in, under the slash dynamic folder. <coughs> okay, that one is script number five. So this is actually the parent for the for the dynamic route. Yes, we can go to the, the next child. Next child. Oh my gosh. Okay. <sighs> okay. It's just like duplicating. Okay. Yes. So yeah. Why do you keep copying the next next child? Ah. Okay. I'm coming to that. Okay. Yes. <sighs> Okay, so we have done the underscore slug view and you have looked at the validate function to validate the URL parameters. What happens if there's no parameters? We'll come to Nuxchell soon because of this. What happens if there's no parameters? You can, that's why we, you can create an index.view file and then show something or redirect them to 
some place for, for uh, some other place. Okay, so that's what's the purpose of the index dot uh, file is for. Okay, so next thing, we have this pages slash dynamic folder. We can add one more thing. Okay, we can add one more thing slash dynamic dot view. Okay. So you have two dynamic here. What's the use of this extra dynamic dot view? So actually, if you want to have a parent page for all your dynamic routes, like if you want some, uh, certain information, like you have a property page, you have something on the left that you want, which is common to everything inside there, uh, you can put the, this thing called dynamic view, which matches the folder name. Okay, that is the parent. And then inside, all the slug will be rendered by this nux child thing. So your slug is, could be a different property like uh, some HDV flat somewhere or some uh, condo somewhere. Uh, it's all rendered inside. Yeah, it's just like a layout. Can just layout. Uh, yes, but yes, it will be confusing <laughs> after that. Yeah, but you can nest it further. So all the pages, everything, the routes, you can nest and nest and nest. Yeah, you can go dynamic, dynamic, uh, sub dynamic, sub sub dynamic, how deep you want. Yeah, you can go, but uh, please, yeah, don't. It's like wrapping high order components. <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. So error handling, you see that 404 page. Okay, this is quite uh, important because uh, there's something, there are, there are a few ways to handle it. Okay, so I think I'll go through this quite quickly. Uh. Yes. Okay, so this 404 page, the first method is, but you don't need to do this, okay, because uh, it's not very good. Uh, I will explain later. Uh, 404 dot view, you create a 404 page, and then inside the Nux config, uh, there's some uh, configuration that you put in to actually redirect back. Uh, there's some problem with this, and there's some problem with this underscore dot view. So, what is this underscore dot view? It's actually a wildcard. It's a wildcard. It's your fallback page. So let's say if you have a slash pages and then underscore dot view. Okay, if you type your URL slash some rubbish, it'll send you here. It'll send you to... So it's a catch-all. Um, but uh, it's, it's better to use the bottom one, which is the layouts slash error. Okay, it's actually a page, although it is put inside the layouts folder. Yeah, I don't know why, but they just did that. Okay, and uh, I think I will explain to you why, so that maybe it's better to... Show the code? Or... Uh, not the code yet. Oh, okay, let me go to this. Okay, so what's the difference between these three? The 404 error is a bit more involved. You've got to create the view file, and then you've got to do type something in the Nux.js, okay? There's a router property. You have to do something about it. Um, the other two, they are easy. It's okay. Um, when you want to navigate between the pages, uh, okay, sorry, but via the, what is it? Uh? Okay, so let's go via browser URL. So you type in blah, 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 slash some URL. All of these cases will capture the error and you go to the error page and you can handle it. But if it's a push, a router push, it's not uh, from the browser where you key in the root. If you push from the browser when you're navigating, the top two will not handle it properly. You go to the default uh, Nux error page. So only the last part, it will handle the thing properly. Okay, this is for server-side rendering. How about static page? when you're using Nux generate, uh, same thing, okay? Same thing. This one will handle the error when you push uh, the route, and it will also handle uh, when they type in the URL manually. 
and how they actually handle it is okay when you're serving the page from your from the host uh, when there's an error route like s3 right as an error route you can specify the html file that it falls back to so inside here there's some configuration where you can state the place to fall back to and you'll fall back nicely to that page and you'll get to see that uh, now yes Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but uh, first, before we continue with that, we'll look at what Nux view is. Oh, can't zoom in, right? Okay, so, okay, we have the layouts for the thing, and we have the page. So the layout, currently, you are seeing only one layout. We will create another layout for the error page. Okay, so your error page, once it falls to error page, the layout will look different. And we can go to readme-3.md. Okay, we go to number, okay, number one and two is we ignore. Number three also ignore. Okay, let's go to, there's one thing called Nux error page. Uh, create a file in the layouts. So later you see the difference in the layout. <sighs> Layouts slash minimal. This is the name I'll call it. You can call it something else if you want. Just remember to use the, the name later. Okay. Layout slash minimal dot view. Uh, you can just copy and paste the thing to the layouts folder. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have created the layouts. Uh, after you create the layout, also inside the same folder, you will create the error dot view. This is a very special uh, file name inside the layouts because this is where Nux will go to handle if you have an error. 500 error, 404, yeah, 500 is the server side, 404 is the client side. It will handle, but of course, uh, one of them, they need to configure on the, the host that's serving the page. It doesn't already exist, so it just override it? Uh, the error.view? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> you can uh, override it, yes. I think so, yeah, I can overwrite it. I didn't know it exists. How come? Uh? You mean the Nux? The, that time when I installed it, it wasn't there, you know? Oh, okay, I think they might put in the thing. Yeah. Because I just prepared this, I think, less than a month ago. Yeah. Okay. So, the error page. Uh, once you copy and paste, uh, very important. Okay. It's uh, item number three. When it's in a static, uh, uh, not when it's in a static page. Okay, let's zoom in. Is it? Yeah, zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. So inside Nux config, inside the generate keyword. You have this fallback. Okay, if you set it to true, <coughs> yep, it will use the 404.html, but this one will go back to the error dot, uh, the, the error, error, page. error page, yes. Uh, I think I set something in the back end. Let me check, just check. Okay, because the back end also needs to fall back. Where is it? Oh crap, okay, never mind. Uh, this one I have to explain. <sighs> okay. Uh, this one there, okay. Okay, so this, this is important if you are doing the Nux generate later. Uh, okay. 
So we are going to try it out after this. Okay, so let's go back to the slide. Okay, so once you have copied those, uh, and it's not defined. 200 is, uh, is okay. It's not, oh. it's not defined inside. Oh, no, it's not designed it's inside because behind. by your web host. So you'll, they'll fall back to a certain page. Like whenever you got the 200 response, you're mm. actually going to something. It's a server side call. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how to test it? Uh, you go into the dynamic menu again. I think there's one option where it says it's a not found or something. When you click on it, it should fall back to that error page. Does it go to that error page? Yes, it does. Okay, yes. So you, see, you should see a page not found. Uh, slash using layouts slash error view. That is the error view page that you are, you are doing. Okay, so once you have uh, some error with your routes, whether it's 404 or 500 site, uh, it will come here. <sighs> Actually, about the, the static generated page, we can... Um, you might have some questions later. I will try and clarify on that part. Okay, because uh, I have not, I, I will try and see how I can replicate that problem here. Okay, so also what you can try is you type uh, the URL. You just type a rubbish URL on the web browser. It should bring you to the error page also. Yeah. E, mm, nope. Uh, yeah. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to type a rubbish URL, it also bring you to the error page. Okay. So now, ah, uh, okay. This dynamic routing on the single page application, it is uh, easily handled. So it's SSR. How about static pages? How do we do it? Because this static pages is all pre-generated, and if you want to generate for every dynamic route. Uh, for every dynamic piece of data which may be in the database and it can change, you have a problem. So uh, there are a few ways. It's not perfect, but can be handled. Okay, so one of the ways that NUX actually, oh, let's zoom in, a bit, zoom, that they show how to do it. Ah, nothing. Zoom. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so inside generate, inside the nux config.js, the generate properties, there's this routes, okay? And what happens is that there's a function that's being called. You go to your API, let's say, for example, you want to generate routes for all your users. So it goes inside here, and then it finds all the user IDs, and then you'll generate. So if you have one million users, I don't, it will work. And some of your users change, or if the things change, it's uh, not good, okay? So, yep. So what you can do is, okay, inside that custom error page, there's a few things you can do. You can allow the user to click a link to push to some other route that is known. Uh, or you can, during the mounting of the page, you can uh, route the person to, to the URL that is 404. Okay, so what happens is that, Okay, let's say you have a slash user slash, let's say Aaron. Okay, because this page is not generated, the static page is not generated because it's dynamic, it will go to the error page. Okay, and what happens is that inside the error page, because you can have this information, you can do a push. Okay, push to this place. And if, let's say, I really exist inside, uh, that would be good. But let's say if I do not exist, so what's going to happen? If I do not exist, it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, error. Yeah, so, so you have to be careful uh, how you handle this. 
Uh, I'm still trying to find a way to see whether it can be better handled. So, but the two ways that so far I've figured out is you either immediately push, but you make sure you know that the person is there, or you uh, click a, a link. So maybe in between what can happen is actually before pushing, you actually check the database to find that there's this person, and then you push. And if you don't find the person, then you show the button to, that says not found and to go somewhere else. That could be one workaround. <coughs> yep. okay, so this is how the error handling is done. Uh, okay, we can proceed. Okay. Uh, okay, time for another. Okay, this one will be a very quick break. Um, yeah, I think don't trust this. Like, anyway, the top, the, the top three React uh, users is actually Singapore, India, and, and Sri Lanka, according to the search. Yep, so apparently Japan is one of the, Japan and China is one of the top users. So you see the blue color that's, and the red color, there's a difference. <laughs> yeah, where pe which people use what? A lot of Eastern European companies use it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but one of my one of my colleagues added Angular JS, right? And then Angular is on top. View non existent. Yeah. But Angular is from Google, right? And then this Google search. I don't know what they do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go on. <sighs> Okay, so NUX options and life cycles. Actually, we have gone through it, but uh, I'm just going to go through. Um, oh, do you want a short break? Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. We have time. Yes. Five minutes. Oh. You can get a, grab a drink or something. Toilet break. Oh. Over an hour left. It's until 4 30, right? Mm. We're gonna have like 10 slides left. Oh, really? Only 4 30? Or 4. 4. four. Is it? Is yeah. What time does it end? Ah? Uh, there's a next event at 4 30. <gasps> okay, shit. That means so we, we end at 4. Up. It's we 3 hours. Number. Oh, we have one, uh, slightly less. We have 10 slides um, left. No, right? Mm. So what? What time your workshop is until? What time your workshop is Because I, I, I only know when the fastest way to get down to the coffee dairy. Lift. The lift. There's a lift. Yeah. yeah. I can bring you step. there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's okay. We still have like. We're going to finish like half an hour off. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? Is it uh, okay? Not too heavy going, ah. Uh. Okay. 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 Oh. Okay. Uh, yes, actually, but uh, we use NUX to generate the static. There's another option that I'll show you later. Yes, it's not just NUX. Um, yes, you can build static websites. Yeah, because I have the dilemma right now that uh, I just want to uh, remove the old way of creating a static website where you just like uh, um, you copy the header of the footer. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's inside the NUX options. You can actually put the header, all the meta tags and so on. To generate. Uh, yes, it will generate those meta tags for each. If it's different for different page, it will be up. Yes, you can put the same or you can put different. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It was a bit heavy going in the earlier part. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, but is, are you able to run it? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I think it's uh, error money on the machine. Oh, on the machine. Okay. But are you able to get the example running or something? Right now, I Okay. Are, are you with her, the machine? No. Oh. But uh, I think uh, I can follow the instructions. Ah, yes. Okay. 
So actually, if you, the the final answer is all inside the, the yeah yeah, but there could be some problems uh, So it's better to run it later and then see that it works. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are you using Vue.js? Yes. Oh, okay. Which company, uh, may I ask? Um, I'm from <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, health company, it's called Victorian Cytology Service, so we're a not-for-profit and basically the, the state government there, they want us to build a vaccination register for everyone in the whole state and we're building the front end in Vue.js. Oh, great. Nux, are you going to use Nux? Um, not for the core registry, but maybe if there's like some, so, so the core thing will be more an internal thing where there's like some like qualified users who log in, but if there's like we need to have some public sites or whatever, yes. we'll probably use the NUX. Yes, yes, public sites. Yep. The short story on the NUX is previously the company I worked is, uh, they're very heavy into the public site. So yeah, that's why the static websites was what they were looking at. Yeah, because the SPA is can yeah. they can't do the SPA. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? SPA twenty enough in Okay. Okay, another two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you everybody for journeying this far. We are coming to the last few stages. Okay. After you can ask a lot of questions. Uh. Okay, so we go to the NUX life cycle. Okay, this is the NUX life cycle which includes the server side. But we can ignore the server side if um, yeah, we can ignore the server side if you are doing SPAs. Okay, or static generator websites. Okay, so first thing is the incoming request for the page. You get the headers, whatever. Okay, NUX will work on it. Uh, okay, the first thing it goes to is this thing called NUX server init. So what does this thing do actually? Okay, so for React, uh, we have Redux. Okay, for Vue, we have Vuex, these stores. But these stores exist in the browser side. 
So I'm going to transfer all the information from there to the, from the server to the browser. This is the one. Right, yeah. This is the one that will do it for you. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. So, and then next, after the, the, yeah, after the working on the store, so you go to the middleware, uh, read the Nux config, and then uh, get all the pages. Then it will do the validation that you see. Okay, if it fails, it's, uh, it'll send you to the 404 page or the 5, yeah, the 4 something page. Okay, and then, so validate, we have already seen already. This is actually one of the Nux options. Okay, after that, uh, async, data, and fetch. Okay, so what are these two? Async data basically is like uh, you're getting the data first in the backend before you put it in the front end. Okay, Vue.js, there's this thing called data. Okay, data where you store all your, uh, your data. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's on the browser side. So this async data, it gets all the things and then it, it uh, copies it onto the data. Yes. So for fetch, similarly, it will do a asynchronous call, fetch, and then put things inside your store. Okay, what's the difference between the, just now the NUC server init and this one? Okay, NUC server init, if you do a API call inside there, what happens is that you take the API, if, if the result is small, it's still okay, then you render the page. But if your result is big, it will go fetch all the data, populate. So it will take a long time, and then after that, it will render, which is, uh, may not be so good. Uh. Okay, so just be careful inside the, the server side. Please, please try not to collect all the data from the server side and then render it. It's like going back to PHP, you know, where you collect everything. So do it somewhere else. Okay, yeah, do it somewhere else. Yeah, I've seen uh, mistakes happen. So the, 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 the website just takes a long time to load because there's a lot of data. They load it on the server and it comes out. Okay, so after that, render. Okay, then, yeah. So I think the big takeaway is about the loading of the data. Whenever you hit a route for the first time, this gets triggered on the server side. So the server receives the internet information first. And after it, it gets all the data, and then it's going to push back to the uh, client. So this is the first uh, phase. And this is, again, that's happening from the very first time you're loading the page. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that's a very computationally uh, intensive, then it's going to take a very long time before it can push the data over to the file. Uh, the next part is like the async data and fetch. It's happening here. Uh, whatever. It will happen one time here too. For the very first time. Yes. So. Um, the way this works, this happens only once in the server, after it loads, and after this, this gets triggered as well. So, but the thing is like, it's like the name says, it's asynchronous, so it's happening on the background, yeah. so it's not gonna be waiting anymore. And for every follow-up time, this will still get triggered, but it's only gonna be tr get triggered in the client side. So we can log out whatever value we, we see, we can see in our developer console, like Chrome or Firefox, and whatever we're logging out, we can see on our server console over here. Yeah, to debug here is actually quite painful for the calls. <sighs> what else is there? Okay, yes, so this is the, for SSR. Okay, for SPA, you can forget about this. For SPAs, yeah. Okay, for static generated websites, what it'll do is, it'll go through this thing once to generate all your HTML. Okay, after that, when you serve the pages, it's on the browser, it's this side already. So actually, this async data, this fetch, it's quite useless there. You can just use the mounted hook to do your calls, yeah, if you want. Okay, so, uh, yes. So now we go to the NUX options. Okay, we have been through uh, async data, once running once on the server, and then every time you navigate to the page, it gets called. Okay. So it's uh, on mounted, it gets called. Yes, fetch, same thing. So actually, if you are doing uh, static pages, right, I think you don't need to use those. But if you are doing SSR, yes, you can use those. Uh, it's just that you need to learn. So just a bit more things to learn. OK, 
Okay, so somebody asked about how about the headers or the things, each different page you want the same or different header. There's this Nux option called head. So you can put all your meta tags and so on inside there. Uh, something to keep in mind, uh, when you're using async data, like because it gets rendered in the server once, uh, if you want to do funky things, funky stuff like getting the window object is not there, so it's going to crash. Okay. Uh, the first time it's going to crash and the following times it's going to go through. So you can just have a, like a guard. Like if window is present, then it's <sighs> going to go you can, yes, and there's one other thing you can do. There's this thing called process. It's inside Nux context, which we'll also go through. Process server equals to true. This basically tells, yeah, on the server side. So if you see this, you can don't do your async fetch for a very big data set, and you can put, uh, you can don't run your window code inside here, like event listener. Okay, so you run it on the else. Yes. Okay, so, yep. This actually is quite important, the process.server. This is the most important thing, process.server or process.client because you need to detect whether it's the front rendered or the back rendered. Okay. Uh, layout. Okay, so layout. We've seen how to use it inside the error view. There's actually a layouts property. Okay, so that's where it changes the look of the layouts to be different. Uh, middleware, we used it also for the authentication. Uh, scroll to top. So if you want to jump to the top page when you navigate, this is the one. It's very easy, this one. Uh, transition, eye candy between page transitions. Validate, we've seen already, validating the route. Watch query is on the server side. So your query strings, each time it changes, uh, you can use this to watch the query change and then do whatever you want with it. Uh, so far, I don't know what to do with it, you know. No, right. Never mind. When you think of it, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, but th this will watch the query string change. Last thing is the loading. So if you navigate between the pages, also there's actually a nice white bar, but uh, you can overwrite it. Yep, the, the loading, loading, loading thing when you go between the pages. Yeah, you can watch query for. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so we covered this. Next slide. Okay, so for Nux generate static web pages, the Nux server in it, async data fetch, basically they are actually not much use. Okay. Um, there is no server inside Nux generate because it's all generated once and then it's all pushed to the browser. So you don't need the, this thing called no SSR. I will show you what this is about again. There's something extra to learn. Um, you don't need to uh, worry about SSR inside your plugins. Okay? Because your plugins, you need to worry about SSR because if you load your plugin, which has a window component, and it renders inside the server 500 error. Uh, there's this thing called server middleware. Okay, so it's like a, you have an express server and there's middleware. This is running on the server side. Uh, I frankly, I don't really like to use it, but you can read more. It's to run some uh, server thing inside. Uh, but you can actually use the express itself. Uh, okay, so view life cycle. So view life cycle, that's created, where it's like component, did mount. Then there's mounted, there's a before destroy, and there's update. Okay, update is that dangerous to use. So, uh, so what happens is that only, uh, only the created hook is called on the server side. Yes, the mounted and the rest, they are not. So we have to be careful. There's uh, only created hook is uh, in the server side. Yeah, mounted has no use. Okay, so... I think we can zoom into the last line. This one shows something very important, which is the context. This is one of the, uh, one of the, the objects inside Nux.js. Okay, so your user agent, where do you get your user agent from? So if you have a server-side rendering, and if let's say your process server is true, that means you're rendering from the server side, 
uh, you can get, actually get it from the request headers. Okay, but if let's say you don't have a server side, it's on the front end, so you get it from the navigator user agent. Why do you cross? Oh, actually, you can ignore the cross. <laughs> I was just trying to explain that inside the Nux generate, you only can use the navigator flag yeah, because it's no longer. Generates yeah, <laughs> it's Nux generate. But this is a good illustration on the server side and SSR thing. Yeah, so SSR is actually is quite a headache, but there are some advantages to it. Okay, so we move on. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is uh, something that you should be aware of. Uh, we will see some problems. Uh, okay, um, let me see. Uh, uh, okay, never mind. Yes, okay, so let's go to available in server. Hey, maybe zoom in. Uh. Zoom in. Okay, we need to know what is rendered in the client and what is rendered in the server. Ah, okay, sorry, before that, there's this thing called Nux Context. So there are actually a few things inside there. It's not too difficult. You can just go through and see what is inside the client and what's inside the server. So you need to find out whether you're in a server or client and know when to use it. Okay, so sample, what is available in the server? The request header. So all your, like your authorization token, everything. You can grab it from the header, but uh, so if you're on the SPA or so on, sorry, you don't have it. On the client, you have this window, navigator, local storage. So if you use any of this inside the server, rendering page, bye-bye. Local storage, get item inside the, yeah, server page, bye-bye. Okay, let's go next. Uh, talking about the problems, but not seeing it in real life. Okay, so the problems with the SSR. Yes, zoom in. Sorry? Yes, actually you don't need, but uh, I just, okay. but it's, okay. So on created hook is only run in the server. Oh goodness, this is very difficult to see. Able to bold it or not? Yeah, it's, oh, run on both, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so, okay, the top if, if it's in a client, okay, you know it's in a client. So the else, you are in the server. You can cut and paste this code, and then you put this window dot add event listener click. Uh, is that like the ethos is <laughs> Wait, no, it's, it's correct, because I want to show the error. Oh, you want to show the error? Yes. So if you are inside the server, and you run this window dot event listener, you will see the problem. Okay, I'm only talking about it, but if you put this code in, you will see the problem. You, it doesn't have to be at event listener. It can be any window thing. You run it in the server side. Uh, it will blow up. Okay. Uh, okay, next. Uh, this one is okay. This one is, doesn't explain it. Okay, so next, hydration failure. Okay, so yeah, this one, you also get this error they say hydration something. Let's zoom into the code. Uh, okay, wait, I hope you all can see. Okay, so we have this thing called date picker. Okay, it's a date picker from the front end side. Okay, what happens is that, okay, you can scroll to the side. Uh, scroll to the left, sorry, to the left. Okay, so if the process in the browser then we require the date picker component because this date picker component inside there's probably some Windows event listener or something so you only listen in a browser but the problem is when you render it in a server you cannot find it because this thing only come in in a browser okay so you will get the hydration failure okay we can zoom back okay ah uh, okay the means means <laughs> Uh, the, do, the, the client side, when they render the, the whole DOM tree, right? Yeah. The thing is not found. This thing is not found. So the, the server side, they are hydrated. You want to explain? You are better so at the it. server, you actually have the entire DOM as well. And like, it's like a virtual DOM, and you have the same on the client side. Mm -hmm. But because you have something extra on the client that you don't have, the, have on the server, mm -hmm. there is an inconsistency. Mm -hmm. So this like, inconsistency is like a hydration error. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, okay, so 
Ah, uh, yeah. So the client side is not matching the server side content. Uh, and then, uh, so they call bailing hydration, blah blah blah. So how to fix it? So you just wrap the component, the date typical, with this no SSR thing. Yes, it's as simple as that. Other that, or you, yeah. Uh, actually, there's one more thing you can do. There's this v, v if, v if, v if is a Vue.js syntax. So if v if is true, it will render that component. If not, it won't. So you can do a. I think you can do a v if, and then if process is browser, then you render the component. That, I think. That, that the output look like? Is it just empty? Or, or yes, in the server side. So that means when you render the, uh, the web page uh, by server, you won't have any data. You won't have that thing, yes. Okay. So you'll come out, yes. So like even when you're on the crawling or SEO, you don't get that. Okay. Yeah. So that's again something to keep in mind. Actually, this SSR thing, there's a few more problems with it uh, that I was working on is uh, if the page is slow to load and then there's some uh, things that are happening you will see some really weird things happening like uh, you type on an input you type on input but because it's the html input and the css is not uh, uh yeah it's html input the javascript has not loaded yet you can type in but then suddenly after the whole javascript everything loaded the whole thing just wipes out and the you you the string is empty yep there's some way to fix it but uh, i can't remember but i hope you all don't meet the error it was something wrong that that we did but, but yeah there's probably also ways to keep parts of the page dynamic right to, to do the server side rendering for most of it and have something like forms being rendered dynamic. and yeah and one more thing uh, you have to know which one you want to render and which one you don't want to render sometimes some of the blocks, right, the, 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 HTML, the, the HTML template blocks, you really need to like, be careful where you want to render the thing. Uh, the no SSR actually helps, does help a lot, but uh, that means everything is still rendered on the client side, which will defeat the purpose of that. Like a second or two, and then suddenly a date figure will appear. Yes. When the JavaScript runs out. Yes, correct. So there's a, I mean, there's are small little things you have to be aware of it's not 100% perfect but if you can uh, manage it uh, there are manage yeah there are ways to manage it uh, maybe there will be another topic that I can write about but so far I've not encountered that, that problem I did encounter it about a year plus ago but I, yeah not that place anymore okay yes so hydration error okay the next one oh this one is a wow this one is an error that I couldn't uh, there's no answer in Google, but we managed to fix it by trial and error. Okay, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. So you have a store, a Nux uh, Vue.js store. Vue.js has this concept of modules for their store. So you can have a store for a user, you can have a store for a product, you can have a store for something else. So you modularize it. But the thing is, they are static. You create the file inside the store folder. What happens if you have a component that you want to have the component created uh, dynamically and the store count dynamically? Oh, okay, never mind. This one the, is available in the slides. Okay, so um, this store register module actually is the one that you can call to register a dynamic store. But the problem is, after registering, um, I get the problem that the, the, the state is not found, not found, not found, that state is not found. So what happens is that uh, I actually needed to have one more line below uh, to initialize the state again. I don't know why, uh, but this is happening. So after I put this in, uh, is fixed because if I don't have this this thing below the commit uh, set counter blah it will not work this one is inside your okay I think this one we can try it's inside your code under the public dot view under the public dot view
Oh. Huh? <laughs> Because everything's so big. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, let's go public dot view. Okay, yes, front end. Okay. Uh oh sh it's not here. That's not here. Uh secure dot view. Uh, wait, uh. Oh yes, yes, it, it is created inside the created function. Okay. So now uh you just open your console log F twelve. Okay, so there's this test start and test end. You just comment out these two. Uh, yeah, just comment out these two lines. And then run. Uh, it's just being run. Okay, let's see. Okay. And then let's see what happens. Do we have some problem already? If it's some problem, it's good. This one? Which one? Uh, the test start and test yes. Uh, no, this one may not be. Uh, okay, refresh. The <laughs> okay, click on the test. Haha. -ha. Cannot read. Okay, so once you reload the page, right, there's a button called test. You just need to click on it. And then, yeah, there's a button on the right test. And then you console, you see the error. Okay, this was the problem. It cannot even increment the counter inside. Okay, you can comment it back and then uh, yeah, uncomment and see what happens again. Okay. So, yeah. So anybody getting error? I hope everybody is getting an uh, error. Okay, <laughs> yes. So once you are done, comment it back. Uh, no, uncomment it back. Refresh and click again. It should work properly. I don't know why it happened. Uh, I have no time to dig into the framework. So, but yeah, it's trial and error. <coughs> Yes, we can go to the slide. Yeah, sir. Yes. You want me to copy Ah, uh, no, we can. Okay, so everybody uh, uncomment and then try. Okay. Yours okay? You managed to. S so you managed to get the error? Oh, okay. Then comment, uh, uncomment. You managed to get the errors, right? Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. now uncomment and then click OK already. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay? Can? Okay. Oh, it's inside that same file. There's a on click, uh, at, at click equals to test. Equals to a uh, double quote test. Yep. Okay, sorry. You all okay? Can see the problem? And then after it uncomment, it should be okay. Yes, so this one, uh, yeah, I had to trial and error many, many. I think I've, I think I've wasted for many hours. On this, yeah, I refuse to accept that this thing cannot work. <laughs> yeah. But you need to do it for uh, all a lot of things inside the state. Nah. Okay, and then one tip is the state, right? Don't need to put everything inside the state. Just important things. Try not to use state for everything. It's painful. Ah, okay. Okay, so now we come to some uh, interesting things, but fortunately it's uh, not uh, happening anymore. So there are some GitHub issues. Can zoom the thing? <coughs> okay, inside the NUX code, right? Inside, somewhere inside there, people found that this single line takes three seconds. Yes. So imagine you have a lot of requests. That's gonna be a problem. So uh, yeah, apparently it seems I think they fixed it in Nux too. The other one, another issue is that response very slowly after a lot of connections also fixed in Nux too. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, you can read through the documentation. Yep. So one thing about using frameworks is that you have to be careful uh, also because uh, if these sort of things really happen, uh, 
uh, it can be game over if you are doing something big. Okay, uh, which after that I'll show you another one, another static site generator for Vue.js. Uh, okay, next. Uh, okay, we'll skip through this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because that crud component is going to take another three hours. <sighs> okay, some helpful stuff, uh, hopefully, for everybody. Okay, next. Okay, so um, some performance tips. Uh, so, like for images, you can use uh, intersection observables, observers to load images. Okay, one example is that, let's say you have a country selector and you have flags. If you do a select, simple select, you click open, you have 200 countries, you have 200 flags loaded, flags loaded at one time. So this intersection observer, actually what you can do is uh, you click, uh, it will load like five flags, which is the space of the selector, uh, for example, and probably plus or minus five flags up and down. So you load only a few. And as you scroll up and down, you see it slowly loading. So you don't do 200 requests, you just do a few. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, code splitting, uh, avoid uh, plug using plugins if possible. Uh, wait, uh, this one I need to find out why I put that. There was a reason. Uh, okay, then languages. That one I'll try and remember and explain. Lazy load languages. Okay, so like you have a language files inside your application. So if let's say you have 10 languages, uh, it's not good to load all 10. So previously, Nux, the, there's a Nux i18n plugin. Uh, they didn't lazy load, but now you can lazy load. So if it's English, you load the English first. Then if it's you switch to French, you select the French. Yeah, so use the lazy load. Not just for languages, also for your components. Your view components can be lazy loaded. Uh, yeah. Uh, load only what's required, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, never mind. Next. Okay, so Vue.js 3. Um, any breaking changes coming up? Uh, extremely minimal. Only one thing so far I saw that's uh, this slots thing. So a lot of people use slots as like, uh, uh, like one level higher on the component. <laughs> so you can put uh, some child inside a parent uh, node. Uh, and then uh, they change it to vslot. Okay, that's all. It's, very, it's actually very simple to, to migrate. Uh, and for the Vuetify that we are using currently is version 1. It's going to move to version 2, uh, which is now in beta. I will update everything once it's uh, more stable. Okay, the style. They are, they are originally using this thing called stylus. Okay, then the problem with the stylus is that there are some problem, uh, some, uh, uh, the person cannot maintain it or some reason. So it's like it's not very good support. So they are dropping the stylus. It has not been actually maintained for quite a while from what I know. So actually, we have to be careful with what sort of CSS that we use when we are uh, building something that everybody can use. So actually, CSS is quite powerful these days. So you might want to consider just sticking to CSS. Uh, there's a very big changes to the initialization process of the Vuetify. Uh, so this one I will also update. So just to take note, because now we are only in version 1. Yep. Then next. Okay, so consider using the static sites, fast loading, e SEO friendly, easy deployment. Okay, know about SSR, SPA, static sites. Okay, then this one. Gridsum is like a, also a static site generator, gridsum.org. Anyone needs Gatsby before? Gatsby site generator? <sighs> so it's. <coughs> the measure for that in view. <laughs> uh, <let's see. laughs> so Gridsum. Yeah. Um, Something that I want to point out. Um, so Nux does a lot of optimization by the scenes. So it does your lazy loading. It will do both splitting for you, and you don't have to worry about that at all. It's also gonna do it when you are being Nux generate. So but that's an alternative to Nux. Uh, yes. uh, the static. Grid sum. Yes, grid sum. Grid sum. That's an alternative to Nux. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes.
Yes, yes, Ken. Uh, so the next slide, we have the workshop materials, the slides, and GitHub. And we're in Singapore, so we have our URL. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so I will place the slide link inside the GitHub repo, Ken, right? Because this one a bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll put the slide links inside the GitHub repo. I'll push again uh, later, so y'all can have the look at the slides. Yeah, we we are very sorry. This screen is very small, yeah. but uh, hopefully everybody can still carry on. Yes, thank you everybody. Thank you. Yep. If you all have any questions, you can ask us or anybody else also. <laughs> yep. uh, okay, the, the, um, so I have a big uh, thank you to Eugene and to uh, Shilling. Okay, they are also using Vue.js, but not Nux because they need to use Vue.js. For, yeah, so they are very good also to handle Vue.js questions. Yes. Okay, so I need time you can push us uh, yeah floor is still open or can stay here and until the next lesson and water yes thank you very much